few years ago, we had the Mike Long story. And just last year, we had the walleye cheaters. We got weights and fish. There we go. Oh, yeah. Now this year, we kind of have a new fishing scandal that is really kind of developing and happening, and it's affecting West Coast anglers. And today, I got one of those West Coast anglers on the show. We're bringing in Austin Bonjour um, out of California. And Austin, I just really want to give it over to you and just let us know what's going on over there on the West Coast. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me on, Tyler. Um, it's been a been a long time. I I met you back in 2018 fishing the, the Bassmaster Eastern Opens. Um, man, what a fun yep. fun year that was, right? I got to meet you and a bunch of other people, and and uh, you know, man, we had this this pretty cool tournament circuit out west, and it's uh, the Wild West Bass Trail. And I've been fishing it since the inception in 2016. Uh, that was its first year that I guess it's birth year, right? And uh, Gary Dobbins, uh, Matt Morgan, and some other folks had purchased that circuit then in 2016, ran it for a few years. And like I said, I was at the first one they ever had a pro-am at Lake mm -hmm. Shasta. Um, and then, you know, Gary kind of got out of it. He sold it and he sold it to the likes of a gentleman named Jeremy DeHart. DeHart, DeHart. Um, and this guy, you know, he's ran the circuit for about five years out west. And, you know, it's, it's kind of had its its rumors on what this guy has done in his past. Um, this, that, and the other. You know, people, you know how rumors are, right? You just can't believe everything you hear. But you had, it had a really good backing. <clears throat> backing uh, as far as anglers, you know, supporting this trail. You know, some really top-tier anglers that were jumping in and, and selling what they had to sell. To, to gather us anglers, right? Like, we have a small field of guys out here in the West. We have MLF, uh, was FLW, and then we've, we have one bass. Uh, we used to have bass out here, but they got out. Um, so you just have those main two trails, and Wild West kind of pulled some of those anglers over to their platform. Um, and anyway, so Jeremy's running his thing. We're all going into it, fishing it, loving it. And then they just had a pro-amp circuit they built on that. They built a team circuit. Um, and then they built this thing called Apex Pro Tour, which essentially was a set group of a set group um, of anglers, like the Elite Series would do it, right? Like 85 guys, or for example. So, But we had 45 guys um, the second year that they had done it, which was my rookie year through them. The first year they had 32 or 33 anglers. Second year, they had 42, 43, 44 anglers, something like that. 2023 would be the third year of this Apex Pro Tour. All ran under the same guy, Jeremy DeHart. Um, and there's been money issues in this deal since he took over from guys getting paid. Everybody everybody should get a paycheck, you know, a couple days at max after an event is ended. Usually checks are printed out for Bass or FLW right there on, on stage. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, there's been issues on getting paid this side of the other for a handful of years, which kind of was normal to us, right? Like we got bought into that. I shouldn't say bought in, just normalized in, in this, in that situation yeah. where whenever we get checks, you know, it'd take two days, three days, four days a week. You'd hear guys complaining about three, four weeks later to get a paycheck. Uh, some of the champions from past events and years past. Uh, and then this year, you know, we had our first apex pro tour event. Um, and, that was in May, and we had 40-something guys, like don't quote me on that, 40-whatever, our fixed field of guys that were there. And only four of the 22 guys got paid. Two of the guys that got paid were out of Jeremy's own checking account through Venmo. Uh, and I know this from the research I've done and talking to the anglers. And the other two anglers just must have got to the bank quick enough to get their checks um, cashed. And then the other 18 Dang. checks, yeah, didn't have, didn't come through there either no checks mailed or you know a half a dozen at least fraudulent checks or rubber checks bounce checks whatever you want to call them and then what really pisses me off is they had two other tournaments right after that they had um the pro-ams which is the same ent entity it's the same organization wild west has the apex series and then the pro-am series you know the next week they had the pro-am tournament and, and they knew all this they knew all this going into those tournaments that they had money issues um 
and they were blaming it on a bunch of nonsense. But they go into that pro-am at the Delta. None of those guys, boaters and co-anglers, about 34, you know, 17 on each side, 17 co's and 17 pros with no checks. And then to make it worse, they had a teams tournament under Wild West Bass, you know, the next week. And I can't believe anybody even showed up because word was spreading like wildfire. And uh, no one's been paid from that as well. From, I mean, I take that back. I know a couple guys have messaged me on Facebook saying that they've got their baseline $300 team event checks right like uh, i've seen about two posts on some of the, some of the things i put on facebook you know, these guys getting some 300 dollars checks but that, that's really the story man it's it's been kind of there's been money issues for the last five years and then coming into 2023 they just burn it to the ground by they i mean the owner jeremy dart yeah and now i know that you are owed i think you said on your um one of your most in, uh recent instagram posts like eleven thousand dollars that they owe you and that's like that's not like little money uh i mean i know you're a plumber and but at, for anyone like that's not a little money for anyone so this is just kind of outrageous it is outrageous yeah and i'm i'm a load of owed eleven thousand, and uh, i'm like sixth in line as far as you know money owed goes you know the first guys at 34 grand and then our champion at Almanor at first apex event I, I mentioned earlier you know he's out 20 that was our first place check and like i said 18 of the 22 hadn't been paid but he's out 20 uh the guy below him's the pro-ams delta championship he's out 14 uh and then there's three of us in that 11 grand range and, and yeah it's just sickening yeah, no, that's uh, that's not right. I, I think you said it the best in one of your Instagram posts that like you pay money to go to a tournament, and if you cash in that tournament, you are supposed to receive money. And like you said, usually it's right then and there you get a check. Now I know with COVID in the West Coast, like they kind of started doing you know these more delayed payments, but still, like it's been how long? I mean, since that first tournament, I guess uh five, six, seven weeks since that that Apex tournament where you didn't get paid. Uh, it's been a, a been way too long, and, and it sounds like from what you've said that no one can get a hold of this particular individual. Is that correct? Yeah, no one's getting a hold of him. He's kind of ghost. You know, he was keeping lines of communication open to me personally uh, up up until the last text message I got from him was uh, uh, I just looked at it this morning it was June 26th, and our event was May 10th through the 12th. I may be off plus or minus a day there, but it was basically the second week or beginning starting the second week of May. So a month and a half later, you know, I was keep I was keeping communications with him, and it was basically, you know, one sent like one sentence here and there. You know, hey, you know, I'm working hard diligently to get you your money. This, that, and the other. Um, you know, we're, I, they kept telling everybody that their accounts were tied up and frozen during escrow um, of selling the company. Right? That's what. If that had been true, which it's not. I mean, the, my wife's in the banking world. And that she's been calling it out since that first excuse they said, saying that their accounts were frozen during escrow, right? That's just a lie. Um, and since then, you know, they, they said that the escrow had fell and fallen through. Uh, there's no talks about that. And Jeremy's just MIA, like like you mentioned. You know, the guy's just um, no one no one can get a hold of him that I've talked to personally, which are the Apex group of guys and some of the Pro-Am guys and the team people. I've been really talking to a lot of these folks and. No one's getting a hold of him. I don't know. I can't tell you who's lying or not. I'm sure some guys are talking to him, but he has since blocked me. Um, you know, I have a, a plethora of text messages that I have for my personal records that he, I can't get a hold of the guy, you know, and um, he's, he's hiding out somewhere and uh, it's not good. It's not good at all for, for all the sponsors, the fans and the anglers. Yeah. So I, I just one big question for you, you know, us as angling brothers is really what I like to kind of say it like we all love to chase fish. Um, you know, what can we do? Anyone who listens to this, like what can we do to just to help, you know, our West Coast brethren over there? Yeah, I mean, I would just spread the word, right? This guy, you mentioned Mike Long or the, the walleye scandal guys. This is just the same, this is the same deal. Just wrote a little differently, right? This guy has gotten out with hundreds of thousands of dollars and he's hiding under a rock somewhere so spread awareness of it you know spread share this video um you know reach out to any, any of us anglers out here that if you see any of our posts about it um kind of chime in keep keep the circulation keep the heat going on this topic right because this can never happen again 
this is setting an example for some other guy out there that wants to do the exact same thing he did, right? That essentially what yeah. he did is he started this, he bought this tournament circuit. He, he's bought us all in on multiple levels from, you know, teams to pro-ams to a, a pro circuit, the Apex Pro Tour. And then he, whatever he did with the money, um, he spent it on something. Who knows? I don't know what he did with the money, but he got us all in. And then he he's blaming selling of a company and then throwing bankruptcy in on top of that. Just, um, you know, selling of a company and then falling back on bankruptcy um, and, and getting out hands free, scotch free. You can't do that like that. That can't happen. So the biggest thing is just to spread, spread awareness about this. Know this guy. Know who he is. Right. Um, and it's got to stop. We, mm-hmm. we all as anglers got to stand up for each other and never let this happen in an organization again. Right. So that's that's kind of what I would say is pay attention to all the posts that are happening out here. All the anglers, there's some big name guys out here that are, I wish more guys would talk about it out here. No one really is. Um, and that kind of drives me insane too. So speak up about it. If you're listening from the West coast, I would really appreciate it. If you, you know, are an apex pro angler, um, or a wild West team guy, and especially some of the bigger name guys, they know who they are. They need to use their platforms to, to talk about this and bring it, bring it up and, really keep the heat on the topic i guess yeah no i definitely agree so if you're listening to this make sure to do just that uh you know keep the heat on the topic and we can try to try to get these west coast anglers paid i mean at the end of the day if they could just get paid i think that that would uh definitely be great um but thanks man i really appreciate having you on yeah thank you tyler